the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yes, sir. I, I know sitting in that church that Sunday morning. The only reason I went to that church, I woke up one Sunday morning and been out all night long. I'm partied and smoked and slept and sacked everything I can get my hands on. And I'm laying there in bed that Sunday morning. Didn't get up, stayed in bed till about 12 o'clock. I'm just thinking. Think about how I was raised. Think about all the hardship I've gone through. Think about the loss of my mom. Think about all these things that I happened that happened to me. Think about I got a job now. I'm making fairly decent money. I got a little money in my pocket, but I'm laying there and all of a sudden I said to myself, it's still something missing. Yeah, yeah. I, I will never forget that day, Beck, because I believe it was at that moment mm -hmm. when I acknowledged that truth. I look, I've got all the things that I thought would make me happy, God. When I was poor, working and couldn't didn't have money to buy the necessities in the life. I said, if I ever got some money, I'd be satisfied. Well, I got it now, and I still ain't satisfied. There's something missing. Hmm. I think right there is what God, God said, that's the starting point right there. That's the starting point. If you don't never come to that place, he won't be able to sanctify you and preserve you. Hmm. At some point, you're vulnerable, more vulnerable, to falling away. Yes, sir. Yes, but if you sir. Go to a place where you, you can't find satisfaction in this world, that you know that what you're longing for, can't, you can't hold it in your hand, and you know there's got to be something else, God's all right. Now we can work with it. We can work with it. Yeah. And I, th I think that's who the gospel is for. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. then, then, then you talk moving away from milk to meat because you have a desire to do so and then that relationship of being hearing from him well i think you i think your desire to move from milk to meat is once you realize the love and desire to love back then you want to know mm -hmm. And in trying to know, mm -hmm. you move from milk to meat. But most people bring their body to church and leave their mind at home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, about to drive me crazy. Mm. Almost knocked my computer up. I saw that. Um, now you give us a tour. <laughs> so I, I just think, you know, you, you get saved. And then, you know, there's there's a, a, a hunger and a desire at first, but they're not getting the sustainment of that to have a desire to move from milk to meat. And so they're just constantly being fed. Yeah, yeah. I think once you once you start feeding yourself is when is when you move from milk to meat. I think so too. You, what you're saying is is when you start to make it real to you. You know, yeah. the, we were talking a couple of weeks ago. He's saying that word becomes real to you. You know, that testimony. Let me ask you a question. Uh, I had my grandson here with me last week, and. Uh, one of the things we notice is, is that when that rascal get hungry, you got to move. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, I never told him to get hungry. <laughs> my wife never went in and told him, okay, baby, come on, you need to get hungry now. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. My, my daughter never had to say to him, look here, baby, now look at time and go by, you need to get hungry. Huh. Somehow, hunger is built into the nature of the life that is in it. Wow. I, I cannot think that the life of God is any different. Mm. I don't think God can leave it up to you to get hungry. Mm. For you to think, I think the nature of the life that is in you is yearning and panting for God. It okay. is, it, 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 it is, it is ravaciously hungry for God. Okay. Now I think that what you have to do is just 
Dude, with that commercial said a long time ago, and I like the commercial. All you can do is do is obey your thirst. Your thirst. <laughs> thirst for righteousness. Yeah. 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 That's ob obey your hunger. Mm. You I, know, I, it, I, I, I hear you, and I understand, and I believe you, because I've witnessed this, and I've experienced, you know, that thirst. But when you have that thirst, and you're not getting anything to satisfy it then that thirst will dissipate over time no mm. oh. I, I, I don't listen listen i, I, went, I, I went through 30 years of it i went through this i went through 30 well, years I'm, I'm talking about after this is my personal experience after being saved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know grew grew up in the church you know was was, was made to go to church and you know as a, as a child you you're learning these bible stories but they really don't bring them to a level where they apply to me these are just stories as right. i'm growing up right and so and i'm seeing the older people you know they they they're experiencing something different and i don't understand it and then when i get older i'm still not understanding because I got this pulling to go and play football on Sunday instead of being in church on Sunday. Uh -huh. you know, pop on the football and, right. and to, and to uh, start doing things uh, like just sports. And, and a lot of sports, ironically, the games were on Sunday. <laughs> right. So, you know, over the years, not being able to participate in that, it just really kind of threw me off. And then I'm just sitting in there really not getting a full understanding of what's going on in there because the lessons for for me as a as a child was never made to relate to me okay. as a child there was just stories that we read and learned mm -hmm. and then as a teenager of course when i'm able to make my own decisions i quit going to church uh but i knew that there was something about it that i, I had always wanted to understand and I knew that my life was based off of the church, but there was a, a a time when I was going to go play on a Saturday, and I heard the church was right like right down the street from my house, maybe like three three houses across the street and down in the cul-de-sac. And so when I was going to go play. I heard them in the church yeah, yeah, and I'm like, it's Saturday. And so once I got up to the doors to find out what was going on, there was a, one of the mothers had one of her sons tearing at the altar, mm -hmm. you know, just crying out to Jesus, just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it intrigued me. And so she kind of saw me and then she gave me a look like you know you can come on up here and do the same thing and not even knowing what he was doing okay yeah, yeah. and uh and, and in my mind i still had a uh uh some kind of sense that he was trying to be saved and give his life to god right. and he was just hollering out jesus save me jesus 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 just you know on and on and on just repetitive and so i just got on my knees and did the same okay and, and I believe that there, don't know how long I was there, but I do believe there was a change in my life because things, I saw things a little different. Okay. And there were some things that I did that I just didn't want to do anymore. And so uh, fast forward, you know, that not being fed, mm -hmm. that kind of dissipated. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm back out in the street. Right. And, um, so when I'm, I'm I'm in my late teens and I'm out there and I mean I'm I'm getting high, I'm drinking, I'm hanging out with, with some of the thuggish friends, you know, that I, I know. Um I got a stolen stereo getting put in my car. Um I'm working for a uh a janitorial commercial janitorial system and anytime i saw something in any of them buildings i want i took it 
Mm-hmm. And um, so in the midst of one day just sitting up there while, while this guy was putting this, this stereo in my car and I got all this this weed on me and we getting getting drunk and just sitting up there just music playing loud just a whole bunch of probably like 12 15 of us just up there on the hill and then i quit hearing the music and it got kind of quiet as i just stared off over the bay and i heard god talk to me okay and basically he said you're either going to die or go go to prison if you do not come to me. Mm-hmm. And so in that I was I was kind of like just spaced out and thinking about all the stuff that that I was doing and it, it made me think about my life. And I just told the guy to take the stereo out of my car. I threw all the dope I had to one of the guys that was over there and I got in my car and I started driving down the street. And God said those same things to me again. And it was so real. And it made me aware that where I was heading. And so then I gave my life to God. 